Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast with Benji Nyson and the Small Animal. If you're watching on YouTube, this is the recap of Stage Three of the Tour of Slovenia. A great stage today. I really, really enjoyed the last 25 kilometers of this from Brezice to Krusko, 165 k's long, and it's all about the Shremich climb. 4.3 k's at 5.6 percent. That crests 21 k's from the finish to short uh, descent then straight into a 1K punch of 6.8%. Then a descent and then false flat sort of run into town of about 12 or 11 kilometers. So difficult to control. The order of the day would be bike exchange trying to drop, I think, you know, trying to set up standard and, and whether really Bauhaus would be dropped on that climb who is the best sprinter in this race. But we had a breakaway as usual. Benji, including the man I liked for the finish, but he got in the break, Restrepo. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the last few years we've had uh, a bit of a an odd type of rider in him because he had decent Conti sprints, but he seems to go on to the attack a lot more recently. And he was there together with Monaco, uh, not a rider living in Monaco, but he is uh, actually Italian. We've got also Cepeda, but not the invisible Giro man Cepeda. It was Jefferson Alvaro. I don't know if they're related. I think, I'm guessing they are, but I'm not sure about it. So if anyone knows that, drop it below. I'm curious to know. But um, he was in the break as well for Caja. We had Sergio Araiz and Kenny Molly in the break. But that breakaway wasn't going to do much today. They eventually got caught when Bahrain started pulling in the peloton earlier on, which I found intriguing because I dare to say that on this stage, it would fit them more to be uh, playing defensively. Maybe Bahrain just accepted that Bauhaus is going to be in trouble and I don't know I thought I thought it was going to be a really messy race after those climbs because we saw uh, on stage two when Pagat, the stage Pagatti won yesterday I, I expected it to be kind of controlled on that climb absolute madness and he broke away so it's a bit more loose this race it seems than uh normal world tour racing yeah. but yeah when did Restrepo get brought back was it on the base of this uh Shremich climb yeah, it was just before it, and the attackers all got caught at that point. Well, Restrepo was the final one indeed that tried to attack away from the others in the breakaway. And it didn't take long for UAE to try and take control on that climb. And they went to the front, and they started hitting it, but not necessarily with, like, oddest riders pacing at a godlike tempo. They actually tried to attack with Micah in the earlier parts of the climb. And I found it interesting because, like... Micah attacks, and in the group we see that nobody instantly responds, but it takes a good 10 seconds before Trotnik tries to bridge up. What do you do if you're UAE, if, for example, Micah and Trotnik are at the front? Do you just let them go and try and... Yeah, but Trot Trotnik is a better sprinter. Like, what do you expect then? Are you just going to, like, not chase them anymore and hope that it goes? Luckily, Astana was taking over in the peloton and closed it down again. But, yeah, I found it an interesting dilemma, whether that two-man group would be... Good for UE to let go. I mean, yeah, we already saw Bauhaus dropped. It seemed like Bahrain were like, okay, we've got Mohoric and Tratnik. Let's not sacrifice to their two opportunities. They're great attackers, great finishers at the, in this sort of field for Bauhaus, who already was lingering at the back. I mean, Bike Exchange did, as we said yesterday, they hit it from the base. The problem was it was one guy. This is a, what is it, yeah. 4.3 4 Ks. The, I'm not sure who was on the front. Apologies to him. He did a great job. He absolutely split the field, but there was no follow through. There was no second rider to attack. And I think Kanga there controlling might have helped. But yeah, they got lucky, I think, bike exchange that UAE didn't do what Benji was suggesting, which was, you know, given that Mike has gone up the road with Tratnik, maybe it's a better idea to have someone else counter that or bridge across because Tratnik's beating Micah head-to-head. -head. Luckily for them, Astana wanted Javier Romo to have a go. I think that's their their rider. He attacked. He then got brought back by UA. I think they allowed uh, Vergard Stefan Langen to come back. So there was lots of attacks flying on this climb, this Stremich climb. I think if Pogaccia attacks... He gets he doesn't get brought back. I, I don't see him getting brought back if he attacked, but he didn't today. I think he decided to ride for ULC or uh, Trenton. Trenton eventually caught back up to them. I'm not sure whether it was in the the descent off the Shremich climb, but it's pretty yeah. much all together. Then the last punch, a lot of opportunities here again for UAE to try something. They got Polance, Micah, Vergard Stekelang, and Ulysses Pegacha, Trenton. 
six guys, I think, when at, at a certain point. Trenton obviously wasn't in a condition to attack straight away. He was at the back of the group. But I was like, but Aberastri, Stannard in this group and Morich, you, you'll see he's not winning the sprint, like not even close to winning a final sprint against those guys. Micah didn't look strong enough to do anything. And so if you don't attack on that climb and try and send attacks with various riders that you have, you're going to be trying to control and a difficult 11 Ks with a large-ish group with riders trying to attack you. What would your play have been there, Benji? Because they did have, you know, narrow roads. They, there were opportunities for them to lose the wheel and have further riders attack. And I don't think a starter would have been strong enough to bring them back straight away. Yes, certainly. And I think there's multiple parts to this. Firstly, I found it intelligent that they waited up on Trenton first while Hulgard was off on his YOLO solo adventure for a bit. And eventually they called back up to Hulgard the second that Trenton was in the group. That's a a small part I wanted to add because I think that's a good strategy that they did. And a bit later, they seemed to fold completely towards Trenton, like you mentioned. And I would not have really chosen that because we know that Trenton has had properly weak flat sprints in his life and recently i i can't even remember the day where he w- did a flat sprint properly because in the tour de france it was always seventh eighth ninth in those sprints and that's just not really the the kind of thing you want to have if you want to compete against Aberasturi in a in a flat sprint who also is able to get a top five top four in, in velta stages as well in in a flat sprint so yeah i wouldn't have completely trusted trentin and you've got the upper hand numerically so I would try to play that out. There's one opportunity that I see in this race where I was like, you should not do this. I was shouting at my screen, like, don't do this. And that was when Daniel Kanger decided to try, to try and attack away from the group. And that is a bike exchange riders try to uh, reverse lead out for Standard. So forcing the other teams to have to close him down and Standard could just sit in the wheel of the uh, people that are trying to close down Kangid. But UAE responded to that with one rider. I think it was Micah, but I'm not sure about it, getting to the wheel. Could have been and there Palance. Was, a of, was it? Sorry? Could have been Jan Palance. It was yeah, the, very the possible. small guys. Very yeah. possible. And um, at that point, the gap was like 10 to 15 meters. And the second UAE rider decides to close it. But at that point, I'm like, you've got a situation whether you either sprint against Trenton in the peloton, well, with Trenton against Aberasturi and such in the peloton, which I don't trust, or you can have the person you've got with Kangert try and sprint Kangert, a rider that is a time trialist and doesn't exactly have a good sprint at all. I would have put my money on trying to have Kangert do that attack, just sit up in the peloton, others need to close it. Probably was going to get closed eventually because Kaja still had two team members for a, Aberasturi there to try and close things down if necessary but it offers some play and opportunities like that are opportunities you want to try and use to make sure that the other teams don't have teammates anymore and the next attack might work again or the next attack and you've got so many riders in that group that you could have done so much more than just do a lead out for Matteo Trentin here that's my case. Tratnik attacked late and that weakened the UAE train even more. So Tratnik attacked and they had Morich behind. So they reverse lead up for Morich. But yeah, Pagacha leads out Trenton. Trenton going first through that right hand bend, kicking with a little bit early. And then Aberastri comes out of from deep. I think he was on Remy Mertz's wheel and uh, kicks around him and beats Trenton easily. And it's actually Morich getting the draft off Aberastri, comes to his left hand side yep. and just comes a little bit late. Aberastri, too quick, second to Bauhaus, nearly beat him on stage one. And I think that was the big indicator of how quick he is right now in a flat sprint. Uh, and not, you know, he Bauhaus is pretty good at like two pro this, this sort of level, and Aberastri, a little bit different, would have been there. So. Kind of played out as we expected, given that we saw him come over the climb. Here's the top 10, Aberastri, Morich, Trentin, Mertz, Askov, Palacen, Shaw, Munoz, Carboni, Strakov, Romo, Hulgard, 11th. Now, the interesting question, Benji, man, you mentioned and told me to look out for Hulgard. Could he have won or, be, or got third or something in that sprint if he hadn't attacked sort of with 12Ks to go? I think a top five is definitely possible. I won't say that he would have won this sprint, but... I found it intriguing because in stage one, he also went in the breakaway instead of trying to go for the sprint. Perhaps he just doesn't have the confidence in a sprint, which I'd say perhaps try it because he's had some decent sprints in the past. And I was just surprising that he tried to go for that attack. But I think it was a, a decent opportunity because it was indeed that 
moment that UAE was subtly trying to wait to get Trenton back at the back again. So perhaps a way to try and counter that, but it's difficult to do that. One name I do want to point out is someone that has been on the uh, back ropes of the groups in the last uh, few days, but is still looking decent in GC. A Slovenian rider in his home country, Christian Hochevar. He uh, is in the white jersey in this race, and um, he's riding for Adria Mobil, riding really well. I'm very curious what the guy will do in the future because he's uh, still a pretty young man. Uh, he is 22 years old and um, was second in Kurla Pei, I think, uh, a week or and a half ago or something. So definitely talented and can definitely climb. So just curious. I wanted to throw that name in there. Yeah, there's a few young guys. looking good James Shaw for Ribble. Uh, sixth in this sprint is actually quite a good result. He was sixth yesterday as well. He was on Lotto Sedal until 2018. He's trying to work his way back into the Pro Tour. Right? He seemed to join World Tour very early. He was a trainee in 2016 when he would have been 19 years old. Uh, maybe he's developing a little bit later. So I feel like he's a guy who maybe in 18 or maybe next year, if you're looking at his power numbers and how he's going at Slovenia, could be a guy uh, to make the jump at least back to pro Conti level, definitely capable of riding at pro Conti level. And I think somewhere like YOLO would be a good fit for him as well with races they do. Uh, but, yeah, an interesting I – really, I really like the last 20 kilometers. Interesting tactics. I think maybe UAE, Benji, this is good that they did this in that they won't make this mistake again in sort of world tour level for Trenton. Um, at the Vuelta, you know, at the Vuelta, he, if they get into this sort of situation where you see more regularly these reduced groups, like would you back Trenton to beat Magnus Court in a sprint head to head right now? No, no. I'd, so yeah, <laughs> I think that Court is better. It's a difficult situation because like if you're in a group with two riders instead of like five, then I would have tried to go for Trenton. But if you've got five people, you might as well try and play around a bit because. If you, for example, have Trenton respond to the attack of Trotnik, there's no other team that can bring you back. No other team will bring that back. And I think that those are the kind of opportunities that can be seen, although that specific example is a bit in hindsight, though. Yeah, I mean, oh, if you if you see our Discord message receipts, we, we can't get accused of hindsight 2020. I think, yeah, he's a, a really good, I think, maybe last kilometre attacker would have been a better option if UAE have multiple riders in a group in the future. But no matter, I mean, they won the stage yesterday, which they might, well, they probably did expect, and Pagach is leading GC by over a minute. Tomorrow's stage is the big one. It's to Nova Gorica. 163 Ks, and it's all about the Ravnica climb, 2.7 Ks, 11%, straight into the final wall, 2.4 Ks, 13.5%. This might be the toughest finish in pro cycling this year. Let me know if there's any tougher. Apparently, there's gradients over 25%. Just really, just brutal. And uh, Pagach is probably winning this stage. <laughs> I think over 90% <laughs> chance of winning this stage. UA will control it. And, Who will get uh, second? Come on, let, let's do this. Who will get second? Uh, that's a good, good idea. So, I mean, so I like Stedman because he's he won GC at Tour of Antalya. He's really small, a good climber, but I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be – who's that lad you mentioned, the the young one on Andrea? Hachivar. Is he a good climber? He, he seems to be a good climber, but – he does have the opposition of a Sobrero, a Carboni, and so forth, so might be difficult. I think Yanni Barakovic, top three. Okay. Put that down. Is Roman, I know Roman Kreuzig is in this race as well. <laughs> yeah. It's a as well, and we saw him uh, again at the back of a group in the descent today. Really? Okay, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, yeah, if Zacharin wants a watts per kilo test, then tomorrow, but you need to be in good position after the short descent from the Ravnica climb, so... Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, Kangut maybe could go okay if you're a climber. I will see Tratnik, the uh, Zonklan. <laughs> the Zonklan, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It, yeah, it's a. I'm trying to look for like a. I don't. I don't recognize a lot of the names. But yeah, Pagash is out now. Favorite. He should extend his GC gap tomorrow in the Tour of Slovenia. Until then, we'll have the recap afterwards. Ciao.